And there are new developments in the UK linked to the hostage situation at the Texas synagogue over the weekend. Haley Ott is following that story as well as other international stories for us from London. Haley, good morning. Good morning, Anne-Marie. Yes, two people have been arrested here in the UK this morning in relation to the attack. The arrest came just hours after a recording, reportedly of a phone call between the attacker and his brother during the incident, was published by the Jewish Chronicle newspaper, revealing how hard the attacker's family tried to get him to surrender to police. During the call, which CBS News has not independently verified, the gunman said he wants to die as a martyr and rails against Jewish people and U.S. military action in the Middle East. His brother repeatedly pleads with him to end the attack. The gunman also says that he had, quote, prayed to Allah for two years for this, raising questions about an investigation conducted by British authorities 18 months ago, where they determined that he didn't pose a risk to national security. Next, we go to Afghanistan, where newly declassified video is providing additional insight into a botched U.S. drone attack that killed 10 civilians, including seven children. The attack occurred during the chaotic American withdrawal from the country in August, as the military was under extreme pressure to prevent bombings around Kabul airport. Just three days earlier, an ISIS-K terrorist had detonated a bomb there that killed at least 182 people, including 13 American troops. The blurry surveillance footage is likely to heighten the debate about rules for airstrikes in populated areas in the era of drone warfare. Now to Tonga, where the first shipments of foreign aid have arrived after a volcano and a tsunami devastated the Pacific nation on Saturday. At least three people were killed, and the country was completely cut off from the outside world. It's only just begun to reestablish contact in some areas. Planes from Australia and New Zealand carrying water and generators were finally able to land after volunteers managed to clear the airport runway of ash. Both Australia and New Zealand have confirmed that the aid drops will be contacted to prevent the spread of COVID-19, because Tonga has only had one single case of the virus during the entire pandemic. Finally, thousands of miles away, Peru is also dealing with the aftermath of that same volcano. Waves generated by the underwater eruption caused a massive oil spill off the Peruvian coast, with an estimated 6,000 barrels spilling into the ocean. Beaches appeared totally black over about 200,000 square feet of coastline in an ecologically important area that's full of marine biodiversity. And marie fishermen who are worried about their livelihoods say that workers appear to be cleaning up the sand, but not the water, soil, flora, or fauna. The fishermen have started protesting outside another refinery run by the same company as the one where the accident was, which they say hasn't come up with any plan to prevent long-term damage. Yeah, in fact, uh, the Peruvian government, at least according to Reuters, is calling for an investigation. Obviously, no one could have planned for that eruption and the subsequent tsunami and waves, but they want to know if there are any weaknesses in the system. And if there are weaknesses that could have been prevented, they're talking about some major fines here as well. You know, it's a big cleanup effort. It's expensive. All right, Haley, thank you.